Welcome to the David Bradley Show with your host, David Bradley. What's going on, everybody? Hey, I want y'all to say hi to Cody Kelly. What's up, what's up, what's up? What's up? What's up, what's up? You are my last show of the day, man. I am honored. Thank you for having me. Have you been having a crazy nightmare like I have? Um, No, it's been a pretty pretty chill CMA. Pretty chill? So far, yeah. You didn't get to play anywhere? Or? Um, no, I've done a couple of shows, but nothing crazy. Nothing just, crazy. You know, I kind of envy that. I kind of wished yeah. I'd have just, you know, chilled out a little bit. But I've had some awesome guests, man, and, and I get you on here, and, dude, it's just been crazy. It's wild. Yeah. I'm going to coin that crazy, crazy week. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Make a lot of money. Oh, I wish. You know, I don't even care. You know, be honest with you. I've just, I've had so much fun doing this, you know, and if I make some money at it, that's great, but, you know, keep the production going, you know, stuff like that, but I don't want a Bentley, I don't want, you know, no big old house in Bel Air, and, you know. I just want a big boat, that's all I want. Dude, I could go for a boat. (laughs) Especially right now? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, I want a pontoon boat, that way I can fish out of it, I can hang out on it. I can go to Party Cove and just chill. Yep. You know, just different things. Yep. Oh, Lord. So, the interesting story, I'm going to tell everybody this. The interesting story is, that's what I said, Cody. I didn't say Kobe. Didn't I say Cody? I thought I said Cody. Didn't I say Cody? I thought I heard Cody. My assistant said to me, it's not Kobe, it's Cody. That's what I said, Cody. Huh? Oh, that's what I got it wrong on. Oh, my bad. Okay. I was like, I thought I heard Cody. <laughs> I heard Cody. No, I actually hit the L after, <laughs> and it was on the Facebook thing because she checks all my stuff for me. Yeah. That's funny. Oh, my God. I did. I hit L before. <laughs> Don't ask. I don't know. That's the way it goes. Okay, so I'll say it again for everybody. Cody Kelly. What's up? <laughs> it's the last damn show, damn it. <laughs> gotta love it. Gotta love it. I know, right? But we got it right. So, there. Now it's fixed on on YouTube for you. Are you happy? Say so you're happy. I'm happy. You're happy? I'm happy? I'm happy. Everybody's happy. Oh, McDonald. Oh, McDonald had a farm. So, anyway, back to what I was saying. At Nashville Studios, where we are live streaming from, Mm -hmm. when me and Miss Teresa, that owns the place, was talking and everything, and there's a TV out front down in the lobby. And for whatever reason, I don't know why... But there's different pictures scrolling through, and then, of course, there's some video with some people singing and, and some different stuff. And a picture come up, and you was actually in a group of people. Yeah. And I seen you, and I looked at Teresa, and I said, whoa, 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 whoa. I want that guy. Bring me that guy. Get him. See if you can get him on the show. And she said, oh, my God, you're going to love him. He's so funny. And I'm like, okay, cool. No pressure. Um <laughs> No pressure. I just got to be the funniest person that you've had all week. So, well, I mean, that's going to be hard to do because you know I've been rolling in my own tears over here, man. There you go. Yeah, it, it's just crazy. But, um, but yeah, dude, I just uh, I found you fascinating. I wanted to know more about your story and everything else because she said you was a singer songwriter, and then sitting here talking to you, you're also a drummer. I am a drummer. That's how I make my money. Yeah, and see, I'm all about the drums, dude. Yes, I love the drums because drums. Every other instrument you look at out there, no instrument predates somebody beating the crap out of something to make a sound out of it. Yes, sir. And that's that's what I tell everybody all the time. I'm just I'm a drum guy, dude. I can't play with crap, but I can beat the hell out of some stuff. It's the greatest stress relief ever. You can't have a bad day when you're a drummer. Oh no, I can imagine. Yeah. I mean, you just sit back there and follow the tune and follow the beat and do what you do and just. Yeah. I seen a I seen a drummer. The other day 
where was I at? I can't remember where I was at. But this dude was sitting behind the kit. And it was like he was in his own little world. And grinning and looking at people and twirling sticks and just never missed a freaking beat, man. I mean, you know, and I find that amazing. I find it totally amazing. I couldn't do it if I tried. Yeah. So how long have you been playing? I tell everybody my entire life. Um, my mom's got video of mm. me sitting on my uncle's lap at 18 months old playing the drum set. Yeah. So well, see, I've, I've been playing all my life. I've told on the show before because a lot of the singers – two three years old stuff like that yeah, started out in churches all that stuff and then um i remember seeing pictures of stuff and and people that i know you'd be surprised where that drumming comes from yeah at what age mm -hmm. because if you got a child that is dragging pots and pans out with some wooden spoons and he is creating his own drum kit at three four years old you're in trouble <laughs> buy that kid a kit man. yes sir yes sir that is awesome yeah now uh my grandma had copper bottom pots mm -hmm. and i mean they were expensive copper bottom pots and i was at two and three years old pulling them out on the ground and ruining copper bottom pots <laughs> Yeah, but they got their own sound, man. Yeah, dude, I'm telling you. Yeah, no, I I hit the I hit the jackpot when it comes to family. Um, I mean, it's it takes a it takes a strong willed family to be like, oh yeah, you know, go go follow a dream, go follow it. Oh yeah, especially as a drummer, because they got to listen to it. And I mean, yeah, my family's been all over. I'm 100 percent behind me the entire my entire life. That is awesome. Yeah. I love that. And I tell everybody, you got to have a good support system, man. Yes, sir. Yes, you sir. really do. Yeah. And somebody that can actually feed that talent mm -hmm. you know that's a big thing with me yeah you got to really feed the talent and you know teach your kids and get them the help that they need and, yep. and how many drums lessons did you take uh one one i took one and the guy told my mom that i was too advanced for him to teach in two years i'll be better than him <laughs> that's what he told my mom so, and how old was you uh four four yes sir wow I don't know whether that is a sense of accomplishment on your part or yeah, no, not really was speaking. One of the most touted drum teachers in, in my hometown. Yeah. And he told my mom, you got a prodigy on your hand. Awesome. Yeah. See, now I want to go watch you play. Oh, well, I mean, it's, it's fun. Mm -hmm. I, I enjoy it. Who all have you played with? Uh, quite a few people. I'm one of those guys that, uh, I'll play with whoever hires me. Awesome. Yeah. So I've played with guys from, bigger name acts to independent to broadway to anyone and everyone that'll hire me i just got brought on full-time with an up-and-coming artist named awesome. Brett westgrove and yeah like i'm super stoked to be playing with this kid he's he's got the look he's got the, the songs he's got the voice like he's the girls that he's the guy that all the girls are going to fall in love with and he's the guy that all the guys are going to want to have a beer with at the show he's just one of those yeah. genuine people yeah, no, I'm with I'm, one of them personalities. Yes, you know? sir. And he just, yeah, he walks onto a stage and owns it. And awesome. Yeah. So, yeah, give it, give it a year and a half, two years, and you'll be hearing them all over the radio. Almost, oh, yeah, almost guaranteed. Well, I mean, you got to have a stage presence. Yeah. Especially being up front. Exactly. Exactly. So, what are you doing back there on the drum kit when you during shows? You entertaining people? You yeah, I try. Um, I, I'm the drummer, so. I uh, actually quit playing drums, which is funny. So I quit playing drums after high school. Yeah. Because there was drummers in high school that were better than me. Right. And I was like, oh, if there's drummers here that are better than me, I'm never going to make this a career. Yeah. And so I quit and actually moved to Nashville to be a songwriter and got put in in Nashville as a drummer for a writer, like a songwriter's night on the Cajon. Right. And then a buddy of mine was like, bro, you should come play out for me. And then I played and I didn't realize that... Uh, there's not a lot of drummers that know how to, uh, without a click in their ears, just naturally stay on tempo. Yeah. And the moment the people found out that I could do that, my phone didn't stop ringing. Oh, yeah. And well, I, I mean, playing the cajon, too, is its own little style. Yes, sir. Can't nobody just pick up that box and start beating on it. Yeah, you have to know what you're doing. It's, it's, yeah, you have to understand your job, and that's the big thing that there's a lot of people that don't understand. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like. I, I, I couldn't do it. Yeah. I always tell people the greatest, the greatest uh, 
well, what's the word I'm looking for? The, the greatest compliment. It's the greatest yeah. compliment I was look, I can ever get after a show. As I walk out and somebody walk up and go, oh, man, you were in the band? Because <laughs> no one looked at me. I didn't screw up. I didn't do anything wrong. Yeah, so that's the yeah. greatest compliment I can ever get. That is awesome. Yeah. I, I, just I never thought about it that way. Yeah, I, yeah. Two front guys up front, and like the bass player even can be up front doing yeah. stuff, and everybody looks at them. But if you look at the drummer, the drummer did something wrong. Mm, I never. I, that's a good point. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm just there to keep everybody in time. Yeah. yeah I know my role as a drummer. Yeah. Well, say so yeah, I. You know, I think, and I say this all the time. I think one of the most unsung position on the whole band has always been the drummer. Yes, sir. And unless you're like you know Neil Peart, and, exactly. Yeah. You know the the big. The big ones, the famous ones. Yeah, New Peer and John Bonham, they could they could sit in the back and no one cares who's up front. They're just watching that guy play. Yeah, because he's doing stuff that no one else is doing. Oh yeah, and and that's what I loved back in the day because you know I grew up with all that stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, and there's nothing like listening to one of their songs and you can hear them drum kits. Yep, and you're just like you're mesmerized by it. Yep, it is wild. <laughs> yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. Yeah, no, it's it's insane. It is. So, what kind of song are you writing? Country music only, or uh, no? I write anything. Okay. Um, I, I I moved to town with the intent of writing country music, mm -hmm. and then I got incredibly lucky right away. Um, I got put underneath the wing of a successful hit songwriter here in town named Lance Carpenter, mm -hmm. and uh, he just kind of showed me the ropes and everything. So, I I I figured out right away like how to do everything you need to do and so i was like oh, okay well then he told me flat out he's like your country stuff's great but what do you got for pop and i was like well, i don't i don't write pop and he's like cool so when someone big artist comes to you and says hey i want to write with you and you say I only write country you're gonna lose out on all the pop artists that are under the same label yeah so you gotta write everything so i at that point i started writing everything you know i didn't even think about that yeah so because I, there's a lot of people here in town that are they only do country. Yep. There's a lot of singer songwriters out there that only do country. Yes. Sir. So that makes a lot of sense, though. Yeah. I mean, you want to be more diversified. Yes, sir. You got to be able to do everything. Yeah. And people don't understand it. Like even as like a drummer. I mean, I'm a country drummer. That's what I do. Like that's what I play. Mm -hmm. But if somebody comes to me and says, "I want to play Blink 182," I can do it. Yeah. If someone comes and says, "Let's play salsa." Okay, let's go. I can do it. You have to know everything. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's your job. You have to. Well, yeah. You know, I mean, you have to be the best at it. Especially if you're a hired gun, you know, too. Exactly. You, you got to learn, like, a whole freaking list of songs. Yeah. Yeah, that actually just happened last weekend. So I was in Fort Dodge, Iowa, and Wakefield, Nebraska. And I went out with a band named Isaac Cole. Mm -hmm. And their drummer dropped out. And they hired me on Wednesday. I got the list as we left on Thursday, and we played our first show Friday. Wow. So I had 14 hours to learn four hours set and an hour and a half set and sleep sometimes uh, yeah i didn't get a whole lot of sleep the first yeah night. i can imagine <laughs> man i mean it's a lot of listening to the same songs over and over and over and over and over and over again yeah yeah well that's you know that's part of it i mean yeah. you know and a lot of people out there a lot of fans and everything don't even think about that whole stuff you know yeah i mean when you're just hired gun until you get signed with an actual artist yeah for a long-term play period you know i mean it's bounce here bounce there do this do that hey you might wake up and get a phone call and then next thing you know you got to be at an airport yep it's happened a couple of times really i've come back from a show and like on the way back i get a phone call and they want to know what city we're going to stop at to get gas and then they get me an uber to the closest airport and i'm going from there to a completely different show wow yeah that would be fun though it's i think a, that it's would a blast be fun. it's a blast as long as you have fun with yeah, it yeah that's absolutely. what you got to do yes sir it's crazy. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, it's everyone thinks life on the road is glamorous because they see these guys out in the massive tour buses and mm -hmm. they look at like the Luke Combses and the Morgan Wallens. And I mean, those guys never, they go, those guys fly to their shows. Yeah, the bus is just their way. Yeah, on. and they land, they land and do all that stuff. And Jake Summers, who is Luke Combs' drummer, is one of my dearest friends here in town. Awesome. And like we were, we were just talking today, and I was like, "What do you guys do on your day off?" And he's been there since he's been in Kansas City since Friday night. Oh, since Thursday night. I'm sorry, since Thursday yeah. night. And uh, he's like, "Yeah, you know, we played golf on Friday and set up and did a little bit of sound check Friday night and 
doing this. And I'm like, man, he's like, what do you do in your days off? And I was like, I don't got those. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> in a bus until we get there. And then when we get there, it's sound check and then it's sleep and then it's wake up, play the show and then it's go to the next show. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and for the band, the band don't they don't get individual buses for each band member. I'm just telling you. <laughs> yeah. No, you're sleeping in a crew bus. Yeah, 12 bunks high. Mm-hmm. Yeah, somebody sleeping above you, somebody sleeping below you. Yeah, and the guy yeah. at the bottom fars everybody all the way up through gets it. Yep. <laughs> I love it. That's when you eat chili for purpose. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> you pull pranks on people on the bus? You have to. You're with each other for hours on end. You have to. You got to do something. Yeah, and I mean, it's... The easiest way to describe like what 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 bus life is like is uh, I tell everybody that talent comes second when you're finding your band mm-hmm. because you have to get along. Yeah, because it's a long drive. Oh yeah. I mean, I mean, like Wakefield from here was 14 hours. Mm-hmm. So it's 14 hours that I was stuck with these guys that I didn't know. Yeah. So, I mean, you have to be able to get along with anybody and everybody. But no, like uh, there's times where. You can't take a crap on the bus. Everyone knows that. So, like, you'll walk yeah. in there with fart spray, and you'll spray fart spray, and you'll walk out and go, oh, woo, woo. And everyone's like, oh, are you kidding me? And yeah. Like, stuff like that. Like, you have to. You have to. Yeah, because now you didn't done, done change the whole ecosystem of the bus. <laughs> exactly. You know? Yeah, sir. Yeah, it's a, I got a buddy of mine, Tim Thurber. He drives tour bus. Mm-hmm. And I think he's working for, like, two or three different bus companies. Yeah. And he's one of those guys that, They'll fly out in relief mm-hmm. and stuff like that, and, and it's just, I think he's left to go to Wisconsin today or something like that. Nice. That's where I'm from. Yeah. You get tired of getting called a cheese head? No. Do you got one of the blocks of cheese? I don't, just because I'm not a Packer fan. Yeah, okay. Whoa, but, wait a minute. You yeah, ain't a Packer fan? I'm not a Packer fan. No, I was actually born in Tampa, Florida, so all my family's from Florida. Yeah. So I grew up with all of my uncles and everything. So I was a diehard, I still am a diehard Tampa Bay Buccaneer fan, and I'm a diehard Miami Dolphin fan. See, because that's what I grew up watching. I grew up back when the Pittsburgh Steelers were great. Yes, sir. And they were winning all those Super Bowls. And then it was back and forth, back and forth. Yes, sir. Dallas Cowboy, mm-hmm. Pittsburgh Steelers, you know, all that stuff. And then I got crap because i you know yay they won you know big deal but i've always been ever since i was little mm-hmm. a miami dolphins fan yeah. always have been yeah i don't care if they win lose whatever yeah yeah no i'm, I'm glad that i mean everyone i like just so everyone knows i am not like the fairweather brady fan like, that, that's not <laughs> how this worked out i've been a, i've been a fan of tampa bay since they were in creamsicle and not very good but, uh, yeah, no, so, like, my Uncle Daniel, he is a diehard Miami fan just because of Dan Marino. Yeah. And he didn't want to like the Buccaneers because everybody in the family liked the Buccaneers or the yeah. Jacksonville Jaguars. So he's like, I'm going to Miami because their quarterback's name is Dan. Mm. Turned out to be one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. But oh, yeah. he liked him because his name was Dan and so was his. Oh. So I ended up falling in love with Miami first, and then it was, like, Miami Tampa, and then growing up, and then just – taking my own route and end up falling in love with Tampa Bay. Yeah. Yeah. See, and that just, I always liked the Miami Dolphins. It was just something about it. Miami Dolphins. Yeah. You know, and the mascot and everything, the little helmet on yeah. top of the dolphin, you yes, know, sir. all kinds of good stuff. And I mean, it helps that uh, you get put into a movie, Laces Out Marino. Laces Out Marino. Good old Ace Ventura, Pet Detective. Did you get put in that? Yes, sir. That is awesome. Yeah. I didn't recognize you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's uh that's what I laughed about on that movie. Yeah. I mean He's gotta be halfway mentally insane for some of the shit he does. Dude, I'm telling you, he's one of the greatest actors of all time. But there's gotta be something wrong. There's gotta be because the stories I hear Yeah. You know, and you pull up on site websites and stuff like that and everything. They say he is as kooky in real life yeah. as he is as the characters he portrays on screen. Yeah. And I'm just like, I kind of want him in here on the show one day just to see. If you get him in here, I want to be in the room. Well, right. haven't you already met him? I wish. You didn't meet him on the set? No. 
That is crazy. Yeah. Hell, I was thinking you'd get to meet him or actually say something to him. No. So what'd you play in the show? Little kid. The little kid? Yeah. What little kid? There was just this little kid in one of the scenes. Now I gotta rewatch it. Yeah. I have to look and see. Yeah. So it was just like standing there or yeah. that's it? Yeah. Just big smile and you're just cheesing for the camera? Yeah. Okay. That's still cool. Though. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so what songs are you working on right now? Um, I've got quite a few in the bank. Um, I'm currently working on trying to get a publishing deal here in town. Um, so I've got meetings with some pub companies coming up and yeah, so I've got I've got some pretty cool songs coming out. I've had a couple of pretty cool songs get put on hold by some pretty major artists mm-hmm. that I've put out and it's been it's been a fun ride. It's been a fun ride. I love that. Yeah. The only thing I don't like is when they're put on hold by artists. Then you go underneath the NDA and you can't talk about nothing. Yep. It bites. Yep. Because deep inside you're like wanting to run out and going. Ah! Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> I got my first hold like six months into town. Yeah. So I moved in. I moved in Nashville in January 2020. Oh, cool. And so I got here and then like the world shut down and then reopened up and I got my first hold like right away and reached out to a buddy of mine that was helping me go through everything. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah, and they had me in and I had to sign an NDA and I was like, you're not allowed to say who this person is. Yeah. You're allowed to say that it's on hold by a major recording artist and that's it. Yeah, that's it. That's all you can say. And I was like, oh, okay. And then I say it and people are like, who is it? And I was like... I can't tell you. And then people are like, oh, I bet you, you can't tell me. And I'm like, no, seriously, like I do, but I just can't yeah, tell you. Yeah, but there's <laughs> there's this cute little piece of paper, man, that says I can't. I'm not worth a lot, but if so, I'm out, they're going to take everything that exactly. I don't have. Exactly. <laughs> You'd be sitting there with a half a drumstick. Right. That's, <laughs> oh, that's my name, guys. They took everything else. <laughs> they took my kit. They right? took everything. <laughs> yeah, yes, sir. I got a half a drumstick, and I can't even eat it. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. But I mean, it's been fun. It's been fun. That's awesome, though, that you got some on hold, though. Man. Yeah, it's yeah, it's been it's been a wild ride. It's I can a imagine wild ride. I've been been able to get into the room with some of my my favorite writers of all time. Like I've gotten to write with Kent Blazy, who wrote the song like "Ain't Going Down" by Garth Brooks, and mm-hmm. "Tomorrow Never Comes" with him. And I mean, I'm so it's just like you would have told me, God, 2019, even you're gonna move to Nashville, you're gonna live your dream. It's going to be the best time you've ever had in your entire life. I'm going to laugh at you and say, right. I yeah, you sure. Like exactly. Yeah. And I mean, I know it's been, it's been wild. It's been it's, wild. You know, it's, uh, it's funny you say that because like when I started doing all this, mm-hmm. everybody kept telling me I need to do it a certain way. I need to do this. I need to do that. Yeah. You follow the analytics and you can only do 30 minute shows or one hour shows and because everybody clicks on stuff and they only stay on it for a couple of minutes and you know, all this crap. Yes, and finally I said, look, I'm doing me boo boo. Mm-hmm. My daughter told me that she said, do you boo boo? Exactly. And, and I started doing that. And now that I've started doing that, I'm, I'm like things that I should not have been able to achieve yes. for some reason. Mm-hmm. It's actually working. Yep. And I think we're just in a weird time right now Yeah, where a lot of things are being liked and shared Mm -hmm. and a lot of dreams are coming true, I think. Yes, sir. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. And I mean, it's like the perfect time to anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like that. There's, there's so many, like, it's so bad here. Because we have so many people that moved to Nashville that think oh, I'm yeah. a singer, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be a superstar. Oh yeah. And they have no idea how much work goes into it. Oh no. And I mean like they have absolutely no idea. Like I practice probably seven hours a day. Yeah. Like it's insane on how much work you have to do to be able to do this. Like I'm writing on any free time that I have, I'm probably writing eleven songs a week. Damn. Yeah, and I'm out on the road want any chance that I can get out on the road. Like you have to be able to do all this stuff to make it all work. Yeah. And yeah. When yeah. you when you write the songs, are you are you doing just the words? Are you doing the music too? No, I can play guitar well enough mm-hmm. to write a song. Like I tell everybody, I don't play guitar. Like if you, I, I I'm I'm trying to get Gibson to give me a custom made guitar. 
Yeah. It only has five frets on it because I don't know how to do anything past fret five. <laughs> but I can, I can play up to fret five, so anything after that, no, I'm, I'm SOL and I don't know it anyway, yeah. so I don't need it. But yeah, like, so I can play well enough to write songs. I know like eight chords, which is cool. Like, woo, I can do like eight chords. Yeah. But like, other than that, like, I don't know. People are like, oh, play this song. And I'm like, bro, I don't know what it is. Yeah. Uh-huh. Free yeah. bird. Yeah. No, I'm sorry. Ain't right. happening. Yeah. I actually got a song called Here's Your Free Bird. <laughs> yeah it's never been played out anywhere because i'm scared i'm gonna lose the audience but it's basically the uh, mindset of a musician on stage flipping off the guy that screams out free bird yelling at him back here's your free bird look dude <laughs> listen i'm gonna tell you something <laughs> clayton q and his guys are in here yeah and we were talking about it's how weird it is certain songs that you think Mm -hmm. won't do a damn thing yeah and you kind of hold it back scared to release it all that other stuff the minute you drop it double platinum yep gold yep just one song is all it takes i actually have that song right now so i I wrote a song it was the stupidest song idea i've ever come up with Mm. it was an accident we put it out and like we we wrote me and Lance Carpenter wrote it, and now it's the one song I can't walk into a, a bar and to do a round without somebody saying you're playing that song right. And I'm like, yeah, I guess I'm playing that song, but it's all about doing yoga. It's called Namaste. Namaste. Yeah, and it all came about from me sitting at BMI doing the right, and me and another writer trying to figure out what we're gonna do, and I booked it for five hours because he was a. Uh, He's, he was recording and putting stuff out, so I was like, we're going to write your entire album in five yeah. hours. And about four and a half hours into it, we didn't even have a title for the first song we were writing. Wow. And he goes, bro, I'm just going to go look out the window, and we're going to figure out how we're going to write a song. And I said, okay. And he looked out the window and started laughing. He goes, bro, you got to come see this. They're doing goat yoga across the street in the park. And I looked at him and I said, <laughs> nah, I'm going to stay right here. And he started ah. dying. He goes, bro, you just said namaste right here. And I was like, that's our song. Yeah. And then he told me he doesn't write stupid shit like that. So uh, you did it on your own. I, I started out on my own and I played the next day and I was playing with Lance. And I told him I had this idea and the second verse needed a lot of work. And I don't know what I was going to do with the bridge. I was going to make it up. Mm-hmm. And I finished out and he leaned in next to me and he goes, yep, you were right. Second verse, absolute dog shit. But uh, let me help you fix it. And I said, okay. Yeah. And we wrote it and it's. The one song that I've got that every publisher in town that is all they've reached out to me about, and they're like, "Bro, we want we want to do something with it." Yeah, and I'm like, "Okay, but yeah." And if you would have told me that was going to be the song, I've got heartfelt songs and patriotic songs and all kinds of stuff. Oh no, no, no. it's just stupid stuff. It's a song that's about a, <laughs> a song about a redneck that's sitting there watching his neighbor do yoga, and yeah. he's like, "I'm going to sit over here and drink beer while you guys go do all that stuff because I can't bend like that." Yeah, exactly. And that's what the song is about. And, that's the song that everybody say i love it just talking about it i (laughs) mean you know yes sir i love the it's almost like a captain obvious moment you know yeah you know i i could just i dude i've already got the music video going in my head i know and that's what everyone says like there's a dirks bentley has a band in town they're called the nashville the hot country nights yeah and they're just a joke man they do 90s country and they've got a song called like the moose knuckle shuffle and Mm -hmm. harassment and everything to me i mean it's like they're great songs yeah and they're just funny and i was like lance we gotta pitch that to hot country nights because i can see that band singing namaste on the stage and like doing their thing he's like oh we got to so we're gonna try to get it over to them guys and hopefully they pick it up and run with it but that'd be awesome yeah i can that song was like meant for them So I started telling everybody now, I was like, yeah, I wrote a song for Hot Country Nights. People freak out. I'm like, so if anybody has any way to get it to them, let me know because they haven't heard it yet, but it's their song. (laughs) Well, I mean, you know, this is live streaming. So uh, Hot Country Nights, see this guy right here? Yeah, this guy right here. You need to call him. Yes, sir. He's got a song for y'all. I do. (laughs) Now I'm going to stay right here. Yes, sir. I'm going to stay right here. (laughs) I love that, man. Yeah. I mean, that is awesome. One of those, that was an accident, and that's how the good ones happen. Yeah. Something stumbles out, and I was like, oh, that's our song. Well, I mean, you know, I've said it before. There is certain songs, and me and uh, Jacob Martin was talking about it. Mm-hmm. There's certain songs that bands do, mm-hmm. and they totally hate them, don't understand why they wrote it, and they hate playing it, 
the hate everything about it, but that one song is worth a Bentley and a big house and, yep. and all this other stuff. And you've got to really just just take a chance on that one song. Just yeah. take a chance. Yeah. You know, I don't care if you hate the song. Yeah. I hear somebody racing outside or something. I don't know. Gotta love Nashville, right? Oh, yeah. Well, you know, it beats the ambulance going by. Yeah. Oh, damn. My butt is going numb. I've been sitting <laughs> in this chair so much. Oh, gotta love it. Gotta love it. Sam my fest. It's the Do you have that happen when you're playing drums? Your butt starts getting numb? Um, so not anymore. Oh, did you get a new throne? I did. I went out and I got a custom-made throne, so it's custom-made to my butt and with memory foam. Wait a minute. What did they do? I mean, how did they mold that? Uh, Come it's on Literally, now. I have to go into the place. I got it over at uh, Forks Drum Closet mm. here in Nashville, and th- th- the guy was telling me about it, and I was like, oh, okay. So I had to go actually out to another part of – they have a factory on the other side of town. Yeah. And they, they sat there, and I had to sit down in this plastic bag type thing and – sat down and it molded everything and they cut off what didn't need they pulled the phone in and dude it was the greatest experience ever but it is molded to my butt so it is great so like i can sit on that thing for hours and be good okay now i'm reaching over to the dirty side on here <laughs> you wear pants you wear special pants uh, like boxer shorts i mean um so i just got an endorsement with a company called collision drumsticks okay and collision drumsticks <laughs> There's somebody that works in the company that was like, bro, you got to try these boxers. They're called sheaths. And I was like, okay. He goes, they got a pocket. You're golden. It's a game changer, man. Nice little pocket for the gonads. You don't have to worry about anything. It, it just sits off to the side. It's a perfect. pocket for the gonads. A pocket for the gonads. It's Look, great, dude. My two buddies that actually talked me into to actually doing something. Mm-hmm. And that's what started this. But uh, Eric and Thomas, mm-hmm. I talk to them on the phone all the time. Um, Eric was trying to talk me into this pair of underwear Mm -hmm. that it's got two pockets. Ah, okay. One's for the main and the other pocket is for the two sidekicks and it keeps them totally separate and they called them. I don't know if it's the actual name of them or not. Yeah. But Eric started calling them Nunanairs. He's wearing his Nunanairs. That's a great name. If it's not the name, then it, yeah, it needs to be the name, name yeah. you know. But it was funny as hell, and they were sitting there telling me about it. And I'm like, typical guy. Dude, I don't want to hear this crap. Yeah. You know, I don't care where you're putting your junk, yeah. you know. And uh, they just kept going on and on about it. And I just said, well, I mean, Commando's always been my choice, yeah. you know. Always has been. Yeah. But maybe that's TMI. I don't know. Is that TMI? Uh, TMI? TMI. Yeah. Now, see, the worst thing about trying that out on the drum set, though, is as a drummer, I'm moving my legs a lot. Yeah. You get you get a buddy up underneath the leg, man, and it comes down. That that's. Oh yeah, I can see that. Yeah, it's not fun. It's not yeah. fun, and it's it sucks, and you're in pain for like the next five songs, and it's yeah, it's not fun. Yeah, but you got them in a the pocket. So. Yeah, so yeah, now they're in the pocket, so they don't move. It's great. I'm telling you. Maybe you ought to try the nun and airs. Yeah, I might need I might need to find out who the nun and airs are. And yeah, I don't know where they're from. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But man, let me tell you, <laughs> you never great. know what the hell we're going to talk about on this show, people. Yes, I'm telling you. It gets crazy. <laughs> oh, Lord. I'm tired. Me too. Let's go get a beer. Let's go get a beer. Jacob. Wasn't that his name, Jacob? I think that was his name, Jacob. I can't remember. My mind is going blank. I'm telling y'all. I'm tired. I'm worn out. I'm exhausted. Yeah. Kid Rock's on the roof. That's where he's playing. Yeah. You want to go down there? You can. We'll go down there. Yeah. We're going to go hang out. And I'm going to buy you a beer because you're my last show. I'll this is it. the last of the live streaming from Nashbox, Tennessee. Nashbox Studio from Nashville, Tennessee. I told you. I'm there. <laughs> Dude. You got uh. it. You got to love Hang it. Hang on. Let me clear my voice. <clears throat> This is the end of the live streaming from the David Bradley Show at Nashvox Studios, 
4th Avenue South in Nashville, Tennessee. Yes, sir. Me and Cody are going to go get a beer. Mm-hmm. We're going to hang out. We're going to listen to Jacob. I had his name. People's na- I have problems with people's names. That's why she was getting on to me earlier. <laughs> um, but this has been fun. It's been awesome. And I thank everybody that has been on my show and the CMA Fest for everything that they make possible every year. No, oh, dude, I'm telling you. All the artists, everybody they bring in. Yeah, we make fun of it here as locals, but it's the greatest thing ever. Well, yeah, it's a lot of damn money. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of money that we get to make because they bring these people in. Yeah, from you getting Australian money, German money, you getting all kinds of stuff. Yes, sir. It might be worth more than our money one day, but you never know. So, <laughs> all right, y'all, we're gonna get out of here. Cody, thank you for being on, brother. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it, yes. and uh, you're welcome back anytime. Just let me know when. Yeah, hey, you can bring your drum kit next time. We'll play it. Yes, sir. You can teach me a thing or two. Will do. All right. Everybody, we'll see y'all later. Remember, like, share, subscribe, follow. It helps all these bands. And if you want to record a song or you want to sit down with one of the songwriters here and create a song, or if you just want to lay some tracks down and do whatever you want to do, if you want to make a song for your wife, your husband, Come down here. We'll help you write it. Well, I won't, but they will. They'll help you write it. They'll even put you in the booth, let you sing it, and create something great for your spouse. It's an awesome studio here, and, uh, you know, it ain't $20,000 for one song. I can tell you that. It's a whole lot cheaper, and it's good quality stuff here. Yes, sir. They are great, and uh, we're going to get out of here. Thank you, everybody that's watched. Thanks for everybody that's going to be watching the streams later on. Uh, Y'all be safe on the way back home from CMA Fest. And we appreciate all y'all. Thank you. Love you. Mean it. Bye.